back on a cold start. It is still hacking and coughing. And based on what we saw in the oscilloscope, it looks like something is a little off in the distributor. So we're gonna dig into what might be going on in there. We just got the distributor out and kind of mounted it here in a little vise. And uh, it seems okay. It doesn't sound really bad or anything as I spin the, uh, spin the shaft down here by hand. Um, so we're gonna look into this further. Sounds a little tinny there. So before we tear the distributor apart, made a real makeshift uh, operation to kind of test this. And so essentially I got a one and a half volt battery here and we're running that through a 330 ohm quarter watt resistor to the uh, top of the top of the uh, distributor here. So this is gonna go in and get uh, essentially shorted to ground every time those points are closed. So that's the point that we're gonna measure with the oscilloscope uh, and then the ground for the batteries over here, uh, as well as the ground for the uh, oscilloscope. And then uh, running the oscilloscope, this is the kind of trace uh, that we're seeing. To run the distributor, I just took my drill and a spade bit here, protecting uh, the uh, inside of the distributor with this, but this is basically like a flat blade screwdriver. And so essentially we can run the distributor like this with the drill. And so you can see there, we spin it and observe the signal uh, at the oscilloscope to understand how the points are operating. Here's the video that we get and you can see that there's a difference in the length of time that the points are open uh, between the different cylinders. And so that's definitely a problem. Uh, and so we're gonna delve into the distributor further to figure that out. When I rotate this the proper direction, it sounds one way. And then here it sounds kind of tinny when I rotate it in the opposite direction. So I don't know if that means anything, but when we get this apart, we're gonna be able to see what's going on inside there. Here I'm just rotating the distributor very slowly by hand and if you watch the center of the shaft here you can almost see it moving radially there uh, which is indicative of some bearing slop in there so uh, we'll get into that here very shortly but that doesn't look too good. This also gives you an idea of the amount of wobble. You can kind of see if you look here at the point gap, you can see that changing. We'll measure this to see how bad the wobble is. All right, we've got the dial indicator hooked up, got this zeroed out, and uh, I'm gonna pull to away from the dial indicator. And you can see there's about four thousandths coming away from the zero and then Looks like um, uh, maybe about seven. I was pushing on the arm there, so that didn't count. So yeah, maybe as much as four in that direction and seven away. So that's, uh, if I don't push too hard, maybe it's around three and yeah, seven, three and seven. So that's about 10 thousandths of wobble. Uh, which is a significant fraction of the gap, which is only supposed to be 20 thousandths to start with. All right, so now we're going to take the distributor apart. We've pulled the plate with the points out of there. And the next step is to remove this drive mechanism here, which there's a tapered pin. So we try to find the small side. Just using a pin punch here and hoping this will just pop right out. Popping right out as much as quickly as I was thinking. So getting this tapered pin out was not as easy as uh, you would think. It turns out that one that both ends are sort of peened over, uh, and so you've got to pick the right end, and uh, and then sort of 
cut that peening off and then you can punch it out. And I started punching it out the wrong way. In other words, I started punching it out to the thicker side uh, and of course that didn't work. So as I realized that then found out that I had to punch it back through the other way and in the process ended up uh, needing to kind of cut off both sides here of the pin. So the question is going to be when this goes back together whether we can uh, whether we can still use this pin or not. So after getting the distributor all apart and taking the centrifugal advance mechanism out then we could just look at the actual shaft here and the bushing and how much slop there is there. So we've got the dial indicator here set to the, uh, or hooked to the side of the distributor. And then we can move here and you can kind of see here, it's, it's about on the order of six thousandths of an inch of radial play there. So again, that's supposed to be a gap of, of 20 thousandths and we're, we have six thousandths of slop in here. And then we measured 10 all together. So that, uh, that means there's probably four slop between here and the shaft uh, to get up to 10. So we're gonna to have to do something about that. So the distributor is all apart, got things cleaned up here. Uh, what we are hoping to do is try to reduce some of the radial play uh, using some shim stock. I had though, just off of Amazon ordered uh, a set of shim stock. This was the smallest, this is a, a 2000s here and uh, was not really able to get this in anywhere. So I think what we really need is a rebuilt distributor uh, and so I think we may order that, but just for now, uh, I think we'll just put this back together as is with all the radial play included. We really were unable to get the, uh, the shim stock, even though you would think with six thousandths of radial play, uh, there would be room to put two thousandths in there on either side, total of four. Uh, but the problem was really getting it into there and uh, the way the shaft is worn, uh, the shaft is actually a little bit, about a thousandth and a half uh, thinner here than it is where it hasn't been worn. And you, you kind of feel that ridge here. You can probably see it in the video there too. Um, but there, there's actually a lip here uh, and maybe not quite as much here. So there's definitely shaft wear uh, on here and uh, that's really preventing us from being able to push this through with shim stock uh, in, the, in the bushings. So, uh, we're just going to reassemble as is and uh, go from there. So here's the uh, cam is set up uh, with the dial indicator on the cam part just to see how uniform it is. And so I was just wanting to take some measurements. So I've got a set up here uh, just before the, uh, well, I was just calling that cam number one here, uh, and it's on zero. And then uh, you can see the peak here goes to like 39. And then when you come back, it's almost like minus five. Then you come up to about maybe 35 on that one and back down to say minus five. And then you go up to say 38 or 39 and then back to maybe one or two and then up to 42 and then back to our zero. So there is definitely some non-uniformity of this cam as we go around. And that's of course gonna lead to changes or differences in the uh, timing between cylinders, even if you have uh, the timing set exactly correctly. The next step is to rebuild the distributor. So we'll either do that ourselves or send it out. Uh, stay tuned and we'll show you what we end up doing. Thanks a lot for watching.